Mike Phillips here. And I want to share that it was a real honor to be asked to do the paint correction on a 1970 Plymouth Superbird. Now this is a long-term restoration project. And what's really cool is this is a very rare car. It's one of 58 builds. What makes it unique is it has the original 426 Hemi and it's a four-speed car in vitamin C orange. Now, the body shop that did the restoration did a great job on all the body work, the paint, and the initial compounding. What they asked me to do is come in and do the final polishing before they presented it to the owner. When I arrived, the paint was in good shape, but it did have swirls throughout the finish. So what I did is I used the Dr. Beasley's NSP 150 for some of the more major areas that needed paint correction. Then I repolished the entire car using Dr. Beasley's Z1. This is like an old school one-step clean wax, only instead of using a wax, it uses a ceramic coating. It creates incredible gloss plus protection. And then I topped the entire car off with the Dr. Beasley's Bead Hero. So watch the videos that come up next and just check out the process to take this from neglected to respectful. Here's the Superbird before I worked on it. And under garage lighting, you can see that the paint looks pretty good, but it's not until you get a swirl finder light on there that you can actually see the level of swirls that remain in the paint. After doing a waterless wash, the first thing I wanted to do was inspect the paint for above surface bonded contaminants. Now, a lot of people think a fresh rebuild like this, the paint would be clean and smooth, and that's normal to think that, but the most common place to get overspray paint is in a body shop, and that's because besides the paint booth, a lot of times they're putting primer or guide coats in adjacent rooms, and it drifts around and it lands everywhere, including the glass. After doing a prep wash and then inspecting the paint using the baggy test, the next thing to do is to mechanically decontaminate the paint. For this, I used the clay mint and the Dr. Beasley's prep wash. Mechanically decontaminating the paint removes all the overspray that was on both the glass and the paint, and it perfectly prepares the paint for the next step, which will be the paint correction step. After doing a waterless prep wash, followed by mechanically decontaminating the paint, the next thing to do was inspect the paint and really get a good idea for what was going on at the surface level using a strong swirl finder light. As you can see here as I zoom in, the entire finish looked like this. There was just a uniform swirl pattern throughout all the different body panels. This won't be a problem for Dr. Beasley's. Just below the wiper arm on the passenger side of the car were some sanding marks I was asked to remove. Now, these were 2,500 grit, so I wasn't too worried about them getting them all the way out. But I put some Dr. Beasley's NSP 150 right on top of the sanding marks. And then using a wool pad on a rotary, I just carefully removed them. Out of all the cars I've ever detailed, I have to say, it's probably one of the largest hoods as far as total square feet. Just look how big this thing is. And those patterns you see there, those are actually the Z1 after a machine applied them using the Flex Red Beast inside. When it came time to do the paint correction step, I used the Dr. Beasley's NSP 150 for the compounding step. And then I switched over to the Z1 to do the final polish and seal the paint with ceramic coating at the same time. As you'll see in the after pictures, the results are nothing short of phenomenal. And here are the final results. Now, these pictures were taken in the shop where I did all the paint correction work, and it looks good under fluorescent lights. But I came back the next day when they moved the car outside before they loaded it onto a trailer so I can get what we call the sun shots. Now, the sun shots is when you position the car in a way that the sun is shining directly down onto the paint. And if there are any swirls at all, you're gonna see them. And as you can see, this paint is flawless. And everything was done using all Dr. Beasley's products. This is the 426 Hemi engine. Um, it's the factory installed engine for this 1970 Superbird. And the way you can identify a Hemi engine right away is by how the spark plug wires go right down the center of the top of the valve covers. That is the visual indicator of a real 
Hemi engine. So anytime I work on a car uh, that I've never worked on before, I call this a bucket list car. And I took these pictures just to show how nice the restoration was on this 1970 Superbird. So there's an old cliche people throw around, it's so nice you could eat off the frame. And if you look, you can see the frame. It's painted bright orange and it's clean, so clean. Yep, you could eat off of it. Another one of the things that makes this really a special car is the pistol grip shifter. Check it out. Mopars were famous for this back in the 60s and the 70s. Okay, it is almost 5 p.m. Started around 10 a.m. So seven hours start to finish. And I'm happy to say that um, sometimes the way I explain how I detail cars is like this. So two things happened here today. The job was done right, that's one. And two, there were no mistakes. The second one's just as important as the first one. And look at this gloss, it's, it's just incredibly glossy. And I have some friends, they detail these big airplanes along the former presidents. But this is the only wing I like to work on. <laughs> anyway, really, really cool car. This is one of 58 built that came from the factory with the 426 Hemi and four speed. By the way, this was a little challenging to get in here and buff out around all these letters but we did it. Inside of the wing, top of the wing, underneath the wing, everything was machine polished twice. Some places, three times. This is the window, by the way, that me and Paul machine sanded and then polished out using the new Dr. Beasley's glass polish. And here's for the most part, everything I used. It was actually pretty simple. I used the NSP 150 to pull out some sanding marks here and there. And my test spot showed after the 150, I could follow the whole car with um, NSP 95. But instead what I did was I switched over to the Dr. Beasley's NSP Z1. And this is like a cleaner wax, only at least the surface ceramic coated. And I did the first pass using this micro wool pad. That took out the majority, or took out all the swirls of scratches. Then I repolished using the Dr. Beasley's foam polishing pads. And I used the Flex Beast. This is actually the red beast inside. Okay, so that's kind of the process I used for the entire car. Um, this is NSB Z1, except where I had to do some rotary work. There's my rotary with a wool pad over here. And these are the results. And I actually tried a couple other products that I brought with me, other recognized brands of abrasive technology. And while they did work to remove all the swirls and scratches, they did not leave a clear looking finish. Okay, the clear coat was not clear, it was kind of hazed. Usually that's micro marring. Anyway, 1970 Plymouth Superbird, 426 Hemi, four speed car. This bird is done. Stick a fork in it and let's kick it out the door.